So here's our um, the second lecture on photosynthesis. Um, or first lecture on photosynthesis, second video lecture I'm doing today. <laughs> okay, um, so photosynthesis. Um, we talked a lot about it in 10th grade, but we're going way more in depth today. Similar to cellular respiration, the point is how do living systems process energy. Also similar to cellular respiration, there's going to be lots of details. Um, that you don't necessarily need to know for the AP Bio exam. So um, I would strongly recommend again to look at the Reading 2-2 standards that are linked on the um, our Google Classroom page. Um, and also note that while I'm going through this lecture, I'm going to be skipping some of the Prezi's um, Prezi slides um, because they are not in the um, standards. And I'm going to be trying to focus on the most important things you guys need to know. Um, this Prezi is um, going to be, the link to it is going to be in the YouTube um, comment or the description and then also on our Google Classroom. I'm borrowing it from another teacher. Okay. Um, so uh, light, uh, basically what's going on with photosynthesis is that we're using light to make food. And this is not being done by us, obviously. It's being done by various um, photoautotrophs. So just like I showed in the cellular respiration lecture, um, hopefully this image sounds familiar. Um, you should be familiar with the idea that matter is cycling between these two processes, but the energy is flowing between them. So light energy comes in to photosynthesis, obviously, um, and ATP energy is made through the process of cellular respiration, but ATP cannot be used to make light. Um, however, carbon dioxide can be used to make glucose. Glucose can be used to make carbon dioxide. You could think about it that way. So these atoms, the matter is cycling, the energy is flowing. Okay. Um, and again, just like in the cellular respiration lecture, you should see that these two reactions, um, their reactants and products are the direct opposite of each other. Okay, really important to remember that we're not just talking about plants when we're talking about photosynthesis. Um, there are lots of other photoautotrophs. So algae um, does photosynthesis. So do some types of bacteria. You'll hear cyanobacteria come up a few times. Seaweed, actually not a plant. It does do photosynthesis. Um, so there are lots of other categories of photoautotrophs. Um, they're all producers. Though there are other types of producers, not just ones that do photosynthesis, um, but that's the biggest category. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about plants, but um, it is important to remember they are not the only ones who do photosynthesis. Oh my god, we don't want to deal with the news. We don't need that. Cool. Okay, uh, so moving on. Uh, so we're going to be talking about different parts of the chloroplast class because we are going to be focused on plants. Um, remember, because of endosymbiosis, the chloroplast has an inner and an outer membrane, and it has inside um, this layered membrane. Um, we call this the thylakoid, and it's in stacks called um, stroma. No, 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 sorry, called granum or grana. Um, and then the uh, sort of the cytoplasm equivalent inside of the chloroplast is called the stroma. Okay, um, so we're not going to go into this too detailed, but uh, chlorophyll is going to come up a fair amount here, and chlorophyll is um, a pigment. Um, it is what makes plants look green, um, and uh, it is also the main component that is involved in uh, capturing the light energy or being uh, involved with the light energy that's coming into photosynthesis. And this part, ooh, no, 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 this part about why are plants green, that is quite important. Um, it's actually very related to the 
um, photosynthesis lab that one group did about wavelength of light. So um, chloroplasts don't absorb all wavelengths of light equally. What I mean by that is that um, chlorophyll really likes certain types of light and um, doesn't respond, doesn't absorb other types of light. So if we look at this, um, we'll notice that chlorophyll is absorbing a lot of blue and some red and not very much in between. And that is the reason why plants appear to be green, because they are actually reflecting the green light. So they are green because they are absorbing the blue and the red and reflecting the green. That's important. People often get confused. People often think, oh, if they're green, they must really like green light. But actually, it's the opposite. If you grow a plant in green light, it's not going to do very well because it can't absorb green wavelengths of light. It can only absorb the mostly the blue range and the red range. And it's actually reflecting green. And we're talking about the, you know, classic plants. There are obviously some plants that aren't green, that don't have green leaves, and then it's a little bit of a different story. But when we're focused on our classic green plant, that's what's going on here. Okay, so getting into photosynthesis. So I'm going to skippy, skippy, skippy. Um, this is what I was just talking about, about the structure of chloroplasts. So again, these this membrane is called the thylakoid membrane, and it's in these pancake-like stacks called grana. Grana is the plural for granum. And then the fluid surrounding the thylakoid stacks is called the stroma. It's going to be useful for what we're going to be talking about in a moment. So photosynthesis has two main parts, um, and we're going to be going through those just like I did with cellular respiration. I've got some notes about them, like distilling it way down. Um, photosynthesis, um, photosynthesis's two main parts are the light reactions and the Calvin cycle. And this image here um, is super useful because it's basically a summary of the whole thing. So light reactions and Calvin cycle. So we're going to go over those two. Okay. So let's start with the light reactions. Obviously, light is required for the light reactions. Hopefully that is unsurprising. Um, so the light reactions occur in the thylakoid membrane, and you're going to see shortly why that is important that they're occurring in the membrane. Um, so the light comes in and it actually excites electrons in the chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll is the thing that's getting, um, that's absorbing the light energy and getting excited by the light energy. And then um, we're getting electrons out of that. And how does that happen? That happens because of something called photolysis. So the first thing that happens in the light reactions is photolysis. Um, and photolysis, so photo refers to light, lysis. If you remember, we've talked about that. It's come up a few different times. Lysosomes, for example, will be one example. Lys means to break. So photolysis is the process of using light to break a molecule of water. And why does this matter? Well, remember that water is one of the inputs or one of the reactants for photosynthesis. And the reason is because of this moment right here. So at the very beginning of photosynthesis, photolysis occurs when light breaks water into hydrogen and oxygen. Sometimes those hydrogen ions might be referred to as protons. Okay, those protons or hydrogen ions are going to be important for the next part, chemiosmosis. So chemiosmosis, remember, showed up in cellular respiration. We're going to see it again here. The oxygen just gets released as a waste product. Um, I'm talking again about the oxygen that is made from the water molecule being broken. So that oxygen is a waste product. It gets released as a product of photosynthesis, and therefore we get to breathe it. Okay, so what happens to these protons? So um, the electron from the... Um, uh, so when the water gets broken... It um, excites an electron, and that goes through something kind of like the electron transport chain, 
let's look here at this. It happens in these two photo systems, which we don't need to know too much about the details of, but basically it's similar to the electron transport chain where electrons are getting shuttled between them and excited and shuttled between them. Um, and then meanwhile, they are putting a whole bunch of hydrogen ions on one side of the membrane, which if you remember, that is also what happened during chemiosmosis and cellular respiration. So the hydrogen ions, um, so here we have the water, photolysis from the light breaks that water, we have oxygen gas released, we have hydrogen ions ending up on one side of this membrane, we have the electrons going across through these, um, this photosystem, these photosystems, which is sort of like the electron transport chain. Um, and uh, one difference is that um, this is, these electrons are being used to make NADPH, which is sort of the opposite of the electron transport chain, um, but similar idea. Okay, and so these hydrogen ions are getting collected on one side of the membrane. And why does that matter? Because remember when we have a gradient, when we have a lot of something on one side and none of it on the other, it wants to even things out. Remember diffusion. So those hydrogen ions are going to go to the other side of the membrane the only way they can, which is through the ATP synthase, and they're actually going to make ATP. So you might be thinking, hey, but I didn't know that photosynthesis was involved in making ATP. Okay, good question. So if we look back at this beginning image, so the light reactions do in fact make ATP. They are going to be, however, needed for the Calvin cycle, so they are not going to be a net product. So ATP gets produced, but um, it then gets used, so we don't actually net end up at the end making any ATP, because all of the ATP that gets made gets used. So that ATP and NADPH are really important. They're, you, they're made through this process of the light reactions, um, but they're both then going to be used in the Calvin cycle. Um, so let's get to the Calvin cycle. So Calvin cycle. So there are so many details involved in the Calvin cycle, and you really don't need to know them. <laughs> um, you, basically, all you need to know is that the Calvin cycle occurs in the stroma. So again, that means that it is um, occurring in the part of the chloroplast that is not on the membrane, the part around the membrane. And um, it uses that ATP and NADPH to make sugar. Okay, that's really what you need to know. How does it make this sugar? Where does the carbon come from to make that sugar? You guessed it, carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, remember, is a reactant for photosynthesis. Why? Because at this moment right here, the carbon dioxide comes into the Calvin cycle and it is fixed. That means that it is um, bonded together into a sugar, specifically a three carbon sugar. That three carbon sugar, if we do this twice, two, three carbon sugars can be put together to make glucose um, or other carbohydrates. So in 10th grade, we didn't talk about the fact that photosynthesis can make, oh my God, are you serious? Can make other carbohydrates, but it can. Um, so we usually just talk about glucose, but it can actually make other carbohydrates as well. Okay, um, and that is really what you need to know for photosynthesis. So again, um, big picture review, we have our light reactions, we have our Calvin cycle. During the light reactions, we have an electron transport chain and we have chemiosmosis. Hint, 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 it's probably not a coincidence that that's really similar to cellular respiration. Evolution, amazing thing. And those light reactions take light's energy and use it to make ATP and NADPH. They can be used to power the process of fixing carbon dioxide which is again one of the reactants for photosynthesis, into a sugar or whatever the um, carbohydrate is that we need to make. Okay, so reactants, water, that's used at the very beginning of the light reactions in photolysis and carbon dioxide, products, oxygen, and a sugar. Awesome, team. In 